Hey all! This is Anosis. Just testing so the microphone was working and it is working. Uh, that's <clears throat> very, very good. Uh, so that should be like that. Uh, good, good. Uh, so uh, today is the 14th of uh, 14th of uh, of March uh, 2022. Drinking some Celsius uh, blueberry frost. Uh, it's not super, super cold, but it is a bit cold. So yeah. Yeah. So some things to talk about uh, and stuff that. So I did get Elden Ring uh, uh, last Friday. That was on the eleventh. Uh, Going to be pretty late on Friday, of course. Uh, I really really like uh, Elden Ring so far. It's very very good. Uh, it's uh, how to say first. I need to mention about the TV. The TV, of course, is the TV from uh, that used to be downstairs before. Uh, I've had this TV now for a while, one or two years or so, I think. I uh, I don't remember exactly how long, but uh, the TV I had before. I thought it was actually slower than this one in terms of like video delay or whatever, but this one has way way worse uh, like input delay. Like the input delay is a bit, uh, you know, like usually when they say like, oh, this is the millisecond of the TV, that's not actually the like the input delay and stuff that. And I have tested also both in Dark Souls 3 and in <clears throat> and in and in Bloodborne, and even Bloodborne feels like sluggish and stuff that. Like there's a very very obvious. Uh, Obvious delay from like when you hit a button on the control and stuff like that, and when the thing is actually happening in the game <coughs> and stuff like that, <laughs> which is a bit bad. And then, of course, the fact that the screen has got a bit of delay. Now, I don't know if that is because the game uh, or something like like in Bloodborne, for example, of course, the, the TV doesn't not go into HDR mode, which it does in Elden Ring, so it might be that it's just worse lag input delay in Elden Ring because of 4K because that's only running at 60 Hz and stuff like that but also for example like <coughs> on the old TV that I had back when I played like Bloodborne I, I think I still had like the 40 or 39 inch TV at that point or 40, 42 inch, inch. this one is like 55 I think or 60 inch or something like that or 65 uh, now the previous one was, was also 55 in I believe but it was a slower model and not an OLED or maybe it was an OLED no this is an OLED the last one I had was a LED but that one was also 55 inches I think and then the one I had before that was a 42 2 inch and then before that a 39 inch and then a 32 inch now my first TV for example which was an HDTV that one was not even 1080 that was, was a 720 TV the next TV that I got after that which was the 39 or 40 inch one was like a which also was a Samsung that one uh, was uh, full HD or true HD which was 1080p and then after that of course I got the I got one of those big LEDs of course which was then like from, from the 40 inch to like 42 or something like that and then after that I got uh, like a 44 or the 50 or 55 inch and then after that I got the 55 inch that I have now and stuff that and when I go back to like Bloodborne and stuff that I still had a pretty pretty big screen that must have been when I had a 14 inch one and uh, and yeah it was just a whole lot less lag on, on that for example on, on that screen or when using that one and the thing is also like in in the Mega Man Legacy Collection uh, or Mega Man X Legacy Collection specifically in those there's a lot of input delay in those games for whatever reason even no matter how you play it like you can play it for, for uh, with, a, with a smaller screen like 4x3 and stuff like that or you can play full screen or you can play with the whole smoothing out effect and no matter how you do it there's a lot of input delay in, in those games which is why <clears throat> so then, of those games are a lot harder <coughs> than they're supposed to be because I remember playing X4 and being really good at it or also really good at X3 and X3 on on the Legacy Collection is harder than in the original game <clears throat> but maybe it's just because the PlayStation Control isn't exactly the best for 
for something like extreme stuff that like can more used to like the Super Nintendo controls <coughs> on those games. <coughs> but yeah, they input delay in one of Lex games that is on a certain stage, uh, I think it's in X5, where you have to get one of the armor pieces and you fire like a laser thing that you guide to a certain thing. That one is like impossible to do just because of the input delay. Input delay being slow, slow, and, <coughs> and that uh, part requires MR precision. So if you press, when the timing should be when you like need to press down, like you can press down at the very, very end, and normally like it's very, very easy to do and stuff that, but it becomes like impossible and stuff that. So I don't know to like if if like pause buffering is a possibility, which it might be. I might have to like pause pause buffer <laughs> and stuff that and use like pause and then used you know move it sl slightly you know and stuff that. But yeah. <coughs> but yeah. But even though there is uh, the input delay and stuff that, I am pretty impressed with some of my how I did my first character. I have two characters now so far. And on, on the first one, of course, I was 39, 38-ish when I did uh, when I did Margaret the Fell. I've been exploring quite a lot both in Lim Grey, but I had also uh, gotten into uh, into the lower part of Lim Grey, but I had also gotten to the uh, 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 not Cartus, something on C. I, I forgot exactly what it was called. But yeah, but in that area, for example, there's a dragon you can kill. And that dragon, if you use the gold pickle foul foot, that dragon gives you over 90k runes. And that dragon you can use to bleed to death. And that dragon also dies, whatever it is. And you can also apply bleed on the weapon to block increase the bleed even further. And <coughs> stuff that. And if you attack, like normally what it's meant to do, I think it is, is that... I think it's meant to summon dragons from nearby, but if you attack it like far, far out at the tail, then it won't summon those dragons because it drops like five hearts, and I don't think that those five hearts are necessarily just from that itself, but from like the other dragons <coughs> nearby or whatever, you know, and stuff like that. So that's <coughs> pretty insane. There's also a fort there, and sadly, I did not know that that was the fort until later on that the, the fort. Uh, uh, fourth, is it Farah or Pharaoh or something like that, which is in that area also, uh, near, near quite near where the dragon is. Uh, that fourth is the one that has the one of the best talismans, uh, which is one the, there's a talisman there that gives you five plus to quite a lot of stats, and it's it's. To four stats, I think it is five, ten, fifteen, twenty. No, it's to five stats, so it's twenty-five points. What stats? So that's like you know twenty-five points. Uh, what stats? So that's basically like twenty-five levels worth of stats <laughs> that you get with that because it's five to each basic. So yeah, so it's twenty-five levels worth of stats with that. And there's like a weaker version also that exists that it's only with, with three points to uh, the same stats kinda. But that one is like way considerably weaker and stuff that, but yeah. And basically it's the fort where you have like bats, uh, bats at the bottom. You can basically use to rush through the ladder, use to run through the ladder. But then when you're up there, there are some kind of invisible guards and they eventually like the glow and they kind of aggro you. They are like blue, so they kind of look like, you know, like spectral helpers kind of you know stuff that and you have to drop down at a certain point and then when you're on that floor those they will actually chase you down by the way when you're on there and then you need to make like a small jump over to another section and then you drop down there or take the ladder down and then there are rats down there and then you need to go around like a certain corner and then that's where the talisman is and the talisman is like really really good to get but yeah when i did a market on Margot the fell uh, I'm gonna actually check what it was called on the PS Trophies thing. Um, but uh, it was called uh, um, yeah, Shardbear Godric and of course Margaret the Fellow Man. Uh, so both of those I I one shot on my, fir on my first character. And actually on the second character I also one shot Margaret Defel and stuff that. And you know, 
the thing is, of course, that uh, when, when I faced it, of course, I, had, uh, I, you know, when I faced it, I was lucky that I had some ranged weapons because, of course, the samurai starts with a with a uh, with a longbow. So I was using the longbow, of course, and I had some some arrows left. Now, sadly, of course, I used up a lot of my blood uh, kind of arrows. Because there are some blood arrows. I forgot exactly where you got the recipe. If you got it at a later area or, or whatever. But there is a recipe that allows you to uh, to craft both blood. Uh, I think it's called blood bone arrows or something like that. And there are a flat version as well. And when you craft those arrows. Uh, they are very 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 good. Uh, they are very very good at uh, like de dealing bleed damage. But the bleed damage it is, isn't super super high. But it's really good against targets that can be bled and stuff like that. Uh, the main problem is that I had like eight of those arrows at one point. But the main problem was of course that uh, that I used up trying to kill the Leo Leo something guy, the, the like the uh, lion boss, and I got close a couple of times. But at that point, I didn't have a plus high, a uh, decent plus weapon. And when I faced up against Margaret the Fell, I had only a 2 plus or a 1 plus weapon at that point. And then I had to use melee on, on that boss because I ran out of arrows because I only had the. I kind of only really, really had left. I did have some, some of the blood arrows left. But the majority of the arrows I had left was with my fire arrows and my normal arrows and stuff like that. So I had to do it with that. But on the. And I had to, of course, go in with melee as well. And stuff that. Now, of course, I did use the ashes that I had. The ashes, however, aren't particularly tanky. But one thing that I didn't know on the first boss, of course, yes, you can summon the best spellcaster, sorcerer guide, sorcerer Roderick or something like that, or or Rod, yeah, or whatever it is. And actually, when you summon that, you can actually have the imps summon at the same time because thank the imp ashes, of course, they really bleed damage. So if you have a bleed damage weapon, you can stack it up quicker, and also with the blood um, arrows thing. But then of course, also in the when you get to the round table hold, the funny thing is the round table hold. A lot of people says, oh, it triggers when you find enough of the, of the you know, <clears throat> of the what do you call it, of the, of of the specific. Uh, uh, when you find enough of the specific, like, uh, you know, places, but it actually seems to me that the trigger is to defeat certain bosses in order to get the trigger, because on, on a certain file where I rushed to Margit the Fell and defeated it at low level on my second character, I triggered it immediately and I'd only gotten like four or something like that, four or five, uh, five kind of or six maybe, just of those, you know, you know, places where you can sit down. And then it triggered the round table. And it seems to be that you have to face certain bosses or that you have to, you know, uh, have gone into a boss arena. Like even if you don't, if you like fail on a boss, then I guess that will count as well. You know, so it kind of works like some sort of hidden insight or something like that. Like when you're in Bloodborne, Oh, when you get insight, uh, you know, like you get insight for visiting boss areas, but then also inside you can pizza, pick up. Because on my main, on my main file, it took a while until I could go to the round table hall for whatever reason, and I had found a lot of like I had over like 15 or something like that, or more, more like of those places where you can rest and sit down and stuff like that. And I had faced a few bosses at that point, a few like op op optional. Boss because there are a lot of world bosses that you can face and stuff like that, so that seemed <laughs> quite a bit weird, you know, and stuff like that, but yeah, it is what it is, you know, uh, and stuff like that, but yeah, of course, uh, Margaret Fell was a bit uh, worse actually on the like I had two heals left, um, basically, but yeah, but if you know, for example, that golden seeds will always be near close to the small go golden trees, and in the church buildings uh, with the big statues. That's often uh, that's where you will find the sacred tears, which makes the flask become plus like one plus two, 
Det är för samma sätt. Det står oss på att den är också get more via Golden Seeds. Först är ni då only one Golden Seed. Den är väl så det är ju start needing two Golden Seeds, then three and then four. And I don't know what it maxes out with how many shards you can get. Over there. But keep in mind that also affects both flasks. It also affects the one that restores the FP, which is the magic, you know, thing and stuff like that. So that is very, very good. But, but yeah, but on, on, um, on Godric, of course, when I did Godric, Godric was actually easier and harder at the same time. I had like no heals left at that point, but there was some stuff that I got stupid enough to get hit by on that boss. And of course, I wasn't able to summon the female fighter, which supposedly you can summon for God Godric and stuff like that. That would of course made it easier. But I was able to use the crossbow. Uh, there is a certain crossbow that you can get in the round table hold if you use uh, if you use uh, one of those uh, stone sword keys. If you get into the second uh, play place, of course, which requires two more bl blood 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 stone uh, or those blood stone keys, whatever they call it, or stone sword keys, you get assassins like prey book and stuff like that. But The first thing, uh, using one at least is worth it to get to the crossbow. That crossbow, by the way, is pretty, pretty decent damage and it has pretty decent range for a crossbow. And that one comes with some really, really good arrows. These arrows inflict Scarlet Rot and those arrows are kind of the, or those bolts are the reason why I was able to defeat, I think. Uh, 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 why I was able to defeat uh, Godric. Uh, So the thing is like the Scarlet Rot actually does build up uh, quite quickly on the boss. And the thing is it's at uh, when the tick activates on the boss, the boss takes damage over time, but which is pretty fast damage over time because it's more toxic rather than poison and stuff like that so that is pretty pretty good. Now of course eventually I ran out of bolts and I had to switch to the bow and you know I had I was lucky enough to have enough uh, bow ammo left. But in the end that's when I kinda got hit quite a bit because the boss The funny thing is when you use a bow, the boss tries to dodge. It doesn't do that when you're using a crossbow for whatever reason. Now, the main problem is, of course, with the crossbow, you have to reload off every shot, you know, and stuff like that. Although with the crossbow, you can kind of one-hand it and shield at the same time, which is not what you can do with the longbow. I'm guessing it might be possible with this... Sh no, it shouldn't be possible with the short bow even. To, like, one-hand it and stuff like that, but yeah. But yeah, so that was pretty, pretty good. Now, of course, the funny thing is when when I faced off against the first boss, then on the on the on the astrologist, which is uh, like one of the sorcerer classes, uh, you have only the glad glintstone shard, and then you have the glintstone like the arc sweep kind of thing, or whatever it is. Uh, and of course, the glintstone shard only costs like 10 FP or whatever it is. And uh, the f funny thing is that uh, Margit fell, like, fell <laughs> really easy to the spell and stuff like that. And keep in mind the keepsake that I show sh shows was the was the uh, Land Between rune. The funny thing is the Land Between rune is actually comparable to 3000 runes, is what it gives. And that's a pretty, pretty high tier rune, all things con considered, really, because, you know, the runes, you know, with how the... Oh, the first room gives 200, then the second room gives 400, and I don't know if it's like 600 after that, if it's like plus 200 each time, you know, stuff like that, because that would mean, of course, like a 10 room would only be 2000, and that sounds like that would be very, very low and stuff like that, but, you know, maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe not, you know, but yeah. But I have no idea what's the highest black room is, like, of normal luck. Like, Style runes and stuff like that. But I would definitely say that certain of the starting gifts are probably worth it more on certain characters. Like the finding bashes is of course really really good because of the bleed. And the and I would say the the rune that gives you 3000 that is worth it on classes that start at lower level because like the class that start at like level 9, which is I think both Samurai and Vagabond start at level 9, and this one class that starts at level 10. On those, uh, 3,000 is not that much. 
But for example, on, on something that starts at level 6 or something that starts at level 1, then 3000 is quite a few levels, so that's very important. FP, of course, is quite good to get uh, early on, just to get more, more spell cast off. Keep in mind that when I try to get to the place, uh, I did have one death uh, just because I didn't go with any healing healing potions at that point that I just gone full with the full with the spell casting potions, you know. Of course, I only had like four shards or f- five shards, I think, of of the spell casting, and then I went like with four one when I did like the boss and stuff. That, but yeah, but yeah, so I had one death trying to reach to where where the boss was on my second character and stuff that. But yeah. And that was of course because I couldn't sit down at the other fireplace because I kept rushing by everything, you know, you so I was able to fight the boss at lower level to see how powerful like sorceries really are and stuff that. But yeah, but of course if I would have gone around and you know like collected a lot more like souls and stuff that like there are like one tip just uh, just on no matter what character you play, there are like small like graveyards, kinda not the one with the swords, which are kinda graveyards, but the ones that have like like these these kind of things like small like tombs or casks I guess and there are usually like souls on the sides like poppable souls and those are all over the map really in in most of the areas at least and uh, finding those are really really good because you can usually find quite a few souls but remember to pop the souls when you actually are gonna spend the souls so you don't like pop and then oops you lose the souls or you know whatever you know or lose the runes I mean bleh. <laughs> but yeah that is pretty good also keep in mind that smithing stones generally tends to be in mines usually there is a certain amount of smithing stones in mines but then there are also ones that can be found in the overworld as well rather than underground and all stuff like that but yeah that is very important one important thing also is to once you unlock the uh, once you unlock the round table, uh, if you pick up the li- if you use the list that shows you all of the sites of grace, uh, you can uh, press square to teleport directly back to the hold. And if you do that, uh, b- but before you do that, you can mark you can mark a location as your favorite, a grace. So you can mark the grace that you want to go back to. After being at the round table, so you mark that grace, boom, you, you mark one of the graces with the RR3, so you cl- click in the stick, you mark as favorite, then you go to round table hold, there are things there, and then when you bring up this other grace list, if you go to the sides with L1, RR1, or whatever it is, you can then see, oh, my favorites, oh, and then you can just pick the location like that, which is really, really good. It saves quite a bit of time. And here, Mom, of course, when it comes to, you can actually kind of see through the fog of war, not like the real fog of war, but but when when an area is explored, the first dark area right next to it, uh, like that is very very close to where the map is uncovered and the map is colorful, those areas are actually kind of see through, and usually map shrines will be along the road most of the time at least, <laughs> and stuff like that so. So if you know that it, it gets pretty, pretty easy to find certain other map shrines and stuff like that, then I would definitely say there are certain map shrines that are harder to find than others. But yeah, I'm finding a lot of map shrines early on is actually very, very useful. And stuff like that, and the main reason why you should find a lot of the lot of the you know sites of grace early on is because you know it just saves time, you know, when it comes to traveling, you know. And stuff like that, and you should dare to go into even higher level areas because even if you like die from like just, just a few hits or whatever, the thing is like you can of course invest in health early on. I will say that this like people are like oh, but I can get but I get less damage. It's the thing like so some damage come from stats, but when your when your weapon is low scaling, there's not super super much high damage that comes from your stats. It's not until the uh, ranks of the weapon starts going really, really high. That's when you really, really benefit from from the stats. Uh, but also because this time around the weapons can gain wide, high pluses. Special weapons can gain up to plus 10. Uh, but other weapons can go up to 25, I believe it is. And stuff like that. Although there is one special stone I think it is that you need. 
to get it to the absolute highest, but yeah. And usually there are things that allows, uh, allows the store to get the stones that you need for smithing and stuff that, you know. And keep in mind on any crystal-esque enemies or the enemies in certain other mines. The ones that are tough for like slashes, you want to use blunt weapons or, or specifically strike weapons. Any weapon with strike on it, so maces, flails, uh, other type of <laughs> things, any, anything with basically strike works. There of course, there are of course slash, there's strike, there's pierce, there's um, like a lot of like different categories and stuff like that, so that is very, very good. But yeah, but on the main file, uh, the audition that I have now is a lot higher now. It's currently like 11 plus uh, on, my, on my main file. And uh, I used to have it blood at one point, but now I have it cold. And the cold one, of course, that makes it so that the bleed is a lot less. The bleed is actually less than originally on the um, on the thing. It's normally at 45. That's the bleed on the Odachi, but... Uh, uh, when you uh, when you make the blood, it goes up to like 60, 60 something plus, and depending on how many pluses you have on the weapon, it goes even higher. But then of course, if you make it cold, then the cold gets very very high, and the bleed only gets to like 39, 38s or 35 is whatever it is. So the bleed gets worse, but then it has the ability to inflict both bleed and cold, which is like really really good because the cold is still like a proc and. I believe you take damage from the cold proc, if I remember correctly, but yeah. But it is a pretty nice combo. I don't know, of course, if there exists like weapons that are, like inflict like Scarlet Rot, or if there is a certain like weapon art or those like uh, Ashes of War thing, if there is a certain uh, Ashes of War that, that makes you get like <laughs> Scarlet Rot. Because Scarlet Rot is really, really poggers. Same thing, they probably exist like stuff so you can apply poison because the different weapon arts go with different categories. Like you have quality, you have like strength, you have keen, keen is stakes. Strength is of course obviously strength. Uh, quality is both strength and dex. Uh, then there's like magic, which of course intelligence, but you also have the normal things that the weapon usually skates with. And then of course you have sacred, which is like holy. You have lightning weapon, which is kind of like <laughs> lightning, <laughs> uh, which you know. But there is a lot of really, really interesting um, scaling things. The cold one is actually <laughs> really, really good, by the way, and stuff like that because yeah, uh, I forgot exactly what it was. Cold damage did uh, cold, cold status. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's frostbite. Some weapon skills and sources can affect frostbite effect. Um. Frostbite is an instance of damage upon triggering, it then lowers the target to damage absorption by 20% and stamina recovery. I believe the cold thing actually they does cause the for spite. Hammerhead, some weapon skills and sorts can inflict bleeding or blood. It affects poison, sleep, blight, scarlet rot. It's below some damage value to be added. Yeah, they use faster damage than rate of poison, but overall a shorter duration. Scarlet Rot Source Weapons. Scorpion Stinger, Ansper Rapier, Rotten Crystal Sword, Rotten, okay, so Rotten is on effect. The following skills back can cause Scarlet Rot effect, Rotten Breath X. Okay, and then, uh, 
Ja, så det är Rotbon Bolt. Rotten Stray Asses. Så Rotbon Bolt måste bli the one that I got. No Black Key Bolt. Ja, yeah, Black Key Bolt is the one that you get. Är det först Gargoyle då in någon table hall along with Creepers Black, uh, key, uh, black key Crossbow? Which by the way has um, has 47 in range. I don't know how is that compared to other crossbows. Yeah, it actually has the longest range out of any crossbow. Apparently you can put no ashes of war on them and stuff that for whatever reason, but yeah. But yeah, so I'm guessing there's probably an ash of war, ash of war that gives rotten. Uh, Is it proficiency? I forgot. Because like all oh, cause know that there is like rot grease and stuff that it works. Then rot grease. Ashes of War, Keen Ashes of War, Quality Ashes of War, Lightning Ashes of War, Magic, Sacred, Heavy, okay, Heavy is the strength one, Fire Ashes of War, Flame Ashes of War, okay, Poison Ashes of War, Coal Ashes of War, Blood Ashes of War, okay, so there's Poison, but there doesn't seem to be a, a Rot one specifically. Or cold dashes war. That's arcane scaling. What's the thing? Poison cold. Heavy fire flame. That is interesting. Now of course the, the thing is uh, the thing is at first I was like oh why is there why is there an item that lets you duplicate like ashes of war and stuff that and the reason is of course because you cannot have two of the same ashes of war on the same weapon and stuff that so actually having having certain ones on several weapons is actually very good because certain ashes of war effects 
of very strong, you know. And especially like say like your strength build, or whatever you for, like focus on strength, you might want to make other weapons heavy, you know, and stuff that you know. But usually there is a lot of like different heavy weapon skills and stuff that. But but I would say the essence of war that's usually worth duplicating are either an essence of war that is really really good, like a really really strong effect, or you want to have like more weapons with certain things because. For example, I think there's only like three. I think there's three. There's three uh, different types of war that inflicts cold. So you can have three cold weapons, but then, for example, if, if you run out and you want to have more cold weapons, then you better get to like duplicating and stuff like that. But yeah. Which is pretty cool, of course. Now one thing I want to say also is that there are like boss boss like refights and stuff that which is cool and the reason for this is because when when you fight the boss the first time you usually get its weapon or something else and then or or sometimes the soul of course if there's some main like boss or whatever you know and then you get their soul and then you can can use the soul to trade in you know of course uh, but you can also pop the solo course for a lot of runes. But then, of course, uh, you can also find a duplicate of it, usually from the big stompy dudes, if you knock them on, on, on the sides. However, the thing seems to be that if you don't have enough of those soul things, or if you haven't fought a new main boss that dropped one of those big souls, then the other dose of those big st stompy boys uh, that has like a mausoleum on top or whatever it is, like the building and the bell, underneath then then you won't be able to find the skulls on on their on their legs or whatever you know that you need to knock off so you won't be able to to do it on any other one until you find another thing because it is meant to be a weight so you can find another one of those souls and stuff like that and the thing is when you find for example the first order you get from boss you usually can get one of the weapons and then with the, with with one of those things, big stumpy things, when you knock it down, you can get another one uh, and stuff like that. Or you can of course use the pop it if you don't want both weapons because you of course can get everything to multiple pay to so of course because there will be like new game plus like in other games most likely. Um, but yeah, so uh, that is pretty pretty cool. Now there is of course quite uh, quite a lot of good spell casting weapons, which is kind of why I played with the as solar east as my second character and stuff that you know because yeah you know, there seems to be a lot of good weapons that way. Now one thing that's also very interesting is of course that if you go with less like he healing and you go with more you know you go with more. Uh, more uh, what do you call it you go with more uh, uh, you go with more like uh, you go with more of the uh, healing or no 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 you <laughs> like you go with less healing you can then of course restore more fp and stuff that but yeah but, uh, but keep in mind also that when you get to the capital area and stuff that the funny thing is you can get to the capital area pretty pretty qu quickly and stuff that and I think that I found the boat of the Dectus medallion kind of by mistake and stuff that which is really pretty good because yeah because in the capital area there are all a lot of like really really good stuff there there's a lot of like golden seeds you can find there and stuff that but yeah but yeah and of course, eventually, of course, I am gonna start having more shards on the thing and stuff like that. But yeah, I know that I need, for example, for the for the troll sword, great sword, which by the way looks pretty pretty good. Although it's an ultra heavy, heavy like great sword. It's one of those crossbow swords, which is weird. It's weird that that thing is heavier than the Swahander, considering it the size of it is like less and stuff like that. And of course, it might be like thicker or whatever. But yeah, well, it's like. A lot smaller, like in size and stuff that, like in length and stuff that, but yeah. But it still have like a really, really heavy swings to it, which doesn't make much sense, but yeah. Now, supposedly, there is also a Dark Moon Wounded Sword, which technically, if you want to get one of the endings in the game, you're gonna have to get the 
uh, Dark Moon Sword, which is the uh, Moonlit Sword, basically the Moonlit Great Sword, and stuff like that. And that's of course. I think I have started that quest line because it's part of Blades Blades quest line also and stuff like that like you basically do certain things with Blade, um, which is the werewolf guy, and then uh, eventually when you defeat um, I defeated the horse rider. The funny thing is at first I tried to do ranged combat against the horse rider, and I used up all my bolts and all my like arrows <laughs> and stuff that, and I decided fine I'm just gonna use my katana, and then when I used the katana to beat damage, <laughs> the end boss was so easy, and I had like a lot of heals left, and I was like okay, <laughs> like I could have just done so much more damage to the boss with my melee weapons rather than the ranged one. I was like okay, like this boss is. Is pretty pretty annoying to dodge, but I'm definitely gonna like stay with range and cheese it. And then I kept failing over and over. And then, like first attempt using just the melee weapon, then I used to kill it. And I was like, okay, I could have just done it first try. Then. <laughs> if I would have, you know, not used the range. Like there's sometimes like that, like when the range just makes a boss super easy. And then like certain bosses like that where oh, the ranged one is not a good idea. Unless you can do of course enough damage to a boss. Now, armor. I need to go armor because here's the thing, like I think that a lot of people just get things wrong and say like oh, armor has no effect. And you shouldn't care about how, how much physical defense or how much blah 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 resistance or whatever you have, but I think that so many people have always been wrong with that, at least from my experience because I do remember oh certain bosses say this boss is hard in Dark Souls 3 oh or the boss that shoots a bunch of arrows in the sky and then arrows ready down and stuff that like oh that one so many people died so many times on the boss and then I fought the boss the first time I died on it once just because I didn't know about the like the rain and stuff that you know and even but even then like I was able to take like I did not die in like one hit from the rain or whatever you know I would need to take like multiple hits from the rain to actually die from it and that was of course because in Dark Souls 3 for example if you equip enough armor like certain armors are good versus certain things so for example oh this boss this arcane damage oh if I am wearing some good pieces that really really lowest arcane damage so I have a, like a very high percentage of arcane defense then that actually does matter quite a lot but what matters the most when it comes to reducing damage is your level. Well, usually the level, I don't know if it only counts for physical defense, but generally there is a hidden like kind of base defense that you have. And no matter what, what stat you level up, you always level up your defenses at the same time. Now, your resistances are different. So, for example, if you're a spellcaster, you are going to have higher medical like defense or holy defense and stuff like that and like yeah if you used to get high enough you know like you can have like very very high defenses to certain certain spell skills and stuff like that and certain bosses becomes a whole lot easier with uh, with of course very very high kind of thing now the final thing is there is a noble robe uh, that you can get a noble set in the in the area with all the crazy villagers. I don't know if it's supposed to be a Resident Evil 4 reference. I think it's put a reference in it, Evil 4 reference. And it's also kinda like a like a Don Quixote reference with whole weather veins and stuff that like you're like, oh am I in the Netherlands or am I in Holland, you know, and stuff that because you know apparently you know like the reason why it's called one thing in Netherlands and like Holland or like the other thing for the place is actually it's just a very very small area in the country that it's called one thing and 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 Dutch people just got tired of correcting people you know or something like that but yeah but in that area you can find a noble set and that noble set is actually pretty pretty good against spellcasting but it's also I uh, there was a certain boss there that I was almost able to to first attempt and that was the boss that has the death build up like the curse kind of build up or whatever it is and when you're wearing the noble robe on that boss then you actually take a lot, lot less curse damage and I was able to actually ride around on the horse and do a lot of damage to it and stuff there, but yeah of course my weapon wasn't massively super super plowed up at that point and I could probably go and solo that boss now and stuff that but yeah 
The funny thing though is Onana the boss on one of the Earth tree. There is a regular Earth tree avatar, like Earth tree, like a minor avatar, and there is a bigger one. On the bigger one, I was able to actually abuse the poison guys that you can summon, and those weren't pluses or anything. They were used the regular poison you use. The only problem is that they move really, really slowly. It's the kind of things that are out in the swamps, you know, that move really slowly and they cost like poison and stuff. That now the fun thing is what that what you have to do is you have to tank the boss, and then you kind of have to bring the boss close to them. But not make it so that the boss swings in their direction so it kills them. So instead you want to kind of get the boss near to where they are. So that they spread the poison. The thing is also their poison damage is different because it's not just that it applies poison to the boss. But if it's in the poison where they are. Then it ticks faster and stuff that you know. Of course they aren't very very highly mobile and stuff that. And apparently there are some wolf ashes somewhere or dog ashes that inflict like scarlet rot which... Is pretty pog. I'm guessing also if you inflict Scarlet Rot on a boss and you have like a poison scaling weapon or whatever it is, you could like inflict both poison and and Scarlet Rot at the same time, or whatever you know. And that would probably be pretty poggers, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah, but generally speaking, if you like make poison or a weapon, then you cannot also have like the Scarlet Rot thing on on the weapon at the same time, you know. So yeah, which is important, but yeah. But usually you have alternative ways to do certain things, of course. But yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, so, on the main file, of course, I was talking about the weapons before. Uh, I also got a Swayhander up to a pretty, pretty decent level. The Swayhander actually kicks ass against certain bosses or certain enemies, like... <laughs> if an enemy is riding a horse and you hit them with the Colossal Blade, especially like with jumping attacks... Like the jumping attack, the heavy one is like fucking poggers. I was close to killing one of the giants. There is a place in the game where you can teleport up to a northern place, up to the place where the capital is. And that, which by the way, it's not a boss, although it kind of finds out about that giant over there. If you do the jumping attack, and if you land it properly, then like two or three jumping attacks and and you knock it down and stuff like that. Um, but the thing is, of course, that getting in on that boss can be, or boss, it's just a regular enemy, but I'm guessing that enemy would drop a shit ton of runes if you actually kill it, uh, considering like the amount of health it seems to have, but yeah. Which is really, really cool, like there's a lot of cool stuff like that, but yeah. You know. I will also say this about trap chests. So there was at one point when I got caught by a trap chest on purpose. First time I saw a trap chest, I didn't know it was a trap chest. I opened it and then I saw smoke coming out and I just dodged other way. And then you don't get trapped. And the thing is, you actually have to stand in it quite a long time before you actually get transported. Of course, if you're sleeping or you have like uber slow reaction time, you basically have to... Oh, I pressed the dodge button. Oh, I got trapped. Instead of, oh, there's smoke, but I just press the dodge button, you know. You can just instinctively do it and then you just avoid it. Although keep in mind that certain areas are actually good to get taken into and, sp and stuff like that. Like of course you cannot escape the area once you're taken into it unless you find uh, uh, one of those teleport things. But you can of course rest also at as if there is a, if there is one of those uh, shrines of grace or sites of grace or whatever they call it. But yeah. Now, of course, if, if it's underground, you know, you have to like go above ground, obviously, before you can teleport and stuff like that. Or kill a boss. Usually, certain underground areas, the reason why you cannot teleport is usually because there's a boss in the area. But then once you defeat the boss, you can usually teleport and stuff like that. Which is really good. But apart from the Swyhander, I've also upgraded like a crystal sword. I've upgraded the troll sword a bit. I have upgraded a, a regular crossbow to one plus. And the Corvin crossbow to 3 plus. I had like my, my, I had those zombie smithing stones, so I can upgrade a lot of the a lot of like the medical or like the special weapons to to 3 plus and stuff like that, but yeah. And like the zombie smithing stones are get do get quite expensive early on, but yeah, there is a giant also that you can visit that the blade tell te te tells tell you about and stuff like that. Now I don't know technically if you need to start the blade thing 
in order to start the like in order to like actually get those some of smitting the stones from that giant because yeah I'm guessing also if that giant dies somehow or if you don't do the blade quest line. Now I don't know if it's always possible to start the blade quest line no matter how far you are into the game, but yeah, but uh, yeah. The thing is of course I believe that if you f uh, that the uh, way you get his set is probably from finishing his quest line and stuff that which you know is probably part of the Dark Moon Blade, but yeah. Suppose that there are several endings and it looks like one of the endings will evolve around that lady because that is the lady that gives you the summoning bell and stuff that you know and stuff that which is pretty pretty cool now one thing also is like lore wise here's the thing right in the earlier Dark Souls game and even in Demon Souls it's it's kind of made out, out that okay you are the chosen one but you're not a singular so to speak like in Dark Souls 2 in Dark Souls 3 in in Dark Souls 1 Oh, so it's an undead, or blah blah blah, or ash and one, or blah blah blah, or whatever. The multiply of you. There isn't like only one, so it's an undead. There are several ones, you know, and stuff that. Like every player is one. Pretty, pretty much. However, in Elden Ring, it feels more like you are the one. Your specific character. Like, no matter if it's a male or a female, you are the chosen one. You are chosen, like you are chosen to be the Elden Lord. That is basically what this character's destiny is, because a lot of people stop seeing the whole track to the capital or whatever, or what their destiny is. And the thing is specific that your destiny is to become Elden Lord. Which seems weird, right? Like, okay, so it's only one of you that sees it, that gets taken to that specific purpose and stuff. That so, you know. And you might say, oh, the people at the round table hold, some of them are also the ones that are meant to become a landlord, but that's not really correct, it seems like. But yeah, the thing is, in this game it actually feels like, no matter what, who, the play, uh, who the player is, there's only one of you, law-wise. But for example, in Dark Souls 1, there are multiply players, or there are multiply chosen undead, like each player is a chosen undead that is trying to become the ruler or... Or the Souls one, pretty much. Same thing in Dark Souls 2, same thing in Demon Souls, same thing in Dark Souls 3. But here, it feels more like, like, even if there are several players, it just seems to count as one being the Elden Lord. The Elden Lord is not like a plural Elden Lords. It's Elden Lord. There's only one. Implying that there's only one person ever at the same time that can be an Elden Lord. And it feels like, no matter how many players there are, lower wise, there's only one of you that is the chosen one that will become the Elden Lord. And the thing that is pretty interesting is that I can say right now is that this is still the Dark Souls universe. This is Dark Souls 4. Same thing with how Dark Souls 3 is technically Bloodborne 2. The reason for this is, uh, of course, there was a certain lore video that I watched, I remember, in Dark Souls 3, which pretty much 100% confirms it's not a whole, oh, this is a theory I have, or whatever, you know. It's pretty much confirmed with, with certain items you can find in the game, and then with certain lore bits, that one of the uh, classes, or one of those things that you face off in... Uh, in, in the Dark Souls in the castle area uh, or further into the game there are these ones that they drop uh, they drop rings or whatever it is and then there's like a knight ring a hunter ring and there are several different rings and then there's one thing that is dropped from a black something something assassin and, and that thing drops a ring and I think it was a hunter ring or something like that I forgot what it was called but when you read on that thing, uh, actually, let me actually read you what it is. Um, Hunter Ring Dark Souls 3. Let me see, Hunter Ring. A ring engraved with a portrait of a hunter increases dexterity. The hunters serve Lothric uh, on their things and in the shadows. For generations, rulers of Lothric have relied especially upon the black hand hunters to punish enemies in ways that. Uh, the king's three pillars 
Blackout. The portrait of the hunter looks like one of the king's black hands. Uh, since Gothard and Camul are or known to be the two two of the three black hands, it is possible but not confirmed that their corpse will be found during the third assessing. Uh, assuming this is him, the circumstance of his death are pretty vague, though, as always in Dark Souls, as pure law speculation that the third assessor may have been tasked to eliminate the heavenly daughter Gertrude, consider as the blah blah blah. The Earth's silhouette of the Hunter Ring resembles the aesthetic of the Hunters from Bloodborne, which was released during development of Dark Souls 3. So, so yeah, so it is pretty much that the Hunter's Ring is actually actually not from the text that I have here on, on the site, of course, obviously, but but there are connections between those those Hunter things being the thing also that in, in Dark Souls 3, uh, Dark, Souls, Dark Souls 3 coins... Is it coins? Rusted coins. Is it the rusted coin? An old rusted copper coin, crushing the coin boost item discovery. Those were lost from my fortune, blah blah blah. Uh, and we have rusted gold coin. What was it as? There was another item. There was another item because it's not just that the hunter ring kind of confirms that it is a bloodborne hunter or that you, the player character, are kinda if you choose the or the lord correct character that's in the game. Uh, wait, uh, da, Dark Souls 3 classes. Uh, knight, mercenary, warrior, herald, thief, deprived, cleric, paramount, so, so, assassin. Uh, I'm pretty certain it's the assassin. Uh, uh. I forgot if it's supposed to be the assassin or the thief. Yeah, uh, just a wait, the sort of armor. It was either the assassin or the thief. Because it's not the mercenary, right? Nope. I'm pretty certain it's either the assassin or the thief. I think it's meant to be the assassin because there is technically like no hunter class, right? But the assassin does not start with a bow. Neither does the thief, right? Not the thief does start with a bow. I forgot exactly how it was, but there is supposed to be another connection also as well, and not just the uh, the like the the hunter ring and stuff like that which is of course part of the black hand assassin and stuff like that but supposedly there is one of the cl classes that law wise is supposed to be a black hand hunter but it's supposed to be a certain unnumbered part of the black hand assassins you know that you don't like have a number or you're supposedly the dark Souls character is supposedly the hunter will walk up in in Bloodborne, that you're actually the hunter who woke up. That you're the hunter that escaped the dream pretty, pretty much. And stuff that, and there are like other evidence, there are like other items and not just the hunter ring. And stuff that, and I forgot if it is supposed to be the coins or exactly what, what item there is like. Oh, 
Um, key items. What else are key items, course? Is it the dual charm? No. <laughs> I know there is an item somewhere in the game also as well, aside from the hunter ring, which is supposed to be the connection to like a bloodborne and stuff that. Dogs of the uh, items connected with Bloodborne. Alright, the dog, uh, the dog hunter shrine also is connected to it. Or well, like basically how hunters them has two, uh, two versions and filing has two versions in Dark Souls 3. And then there are also certain other things like uh, like a mask that Yuria wears. Uh, calls the mind to the one of the Viper King wears in Kanehurst. Yuria is also the name of Ruiz from Demon Souls. Uh, in addition, Leon Artist dressed like a man at the time, his outfits in, in particular he's at a tricorn, his exact some style that like the best in blah blah one. Clegg of the shirts, transforming into beasts, becoming corrupted. Abyss watches of course very very obviously. His flaming sword and combat style Myris, Maria and the old hunter still see. But there are of course some certain ones that kinda became like of official ones, except you know it hasn't been confirmed by the Thing you know, and stuff, but yeah, but then of course, uh, like the thing is, there's supposed to be certain items which that have the connection, and apparently, one of the, the classes either either the assassin or the or the thief, I believe it is that supposedly is. I mean, I guess it could be the thief technically because the thief that the certain armor when you read about it, it's like long worn, so it's been worn for a long time and it's on. Recognizable, like it's not from the world or something like that. So, but they're all like supposedly one class that are supposedly the correct one, and that you are kind of meant to be a black hand assassin, except you're a hidden member of it or something like that. And then the hunter ring obviously has the thing very similar to the blah blah thing. But the thing is, of course, if we say that okay, so that. This is Bloodborne after you have woken up, basically. Uh, that's what like, Dark Souls is. But then, of course, uh, the connection to uh, to Elden Ring. In Elden Ring, there is, of course, one of the NPCs that are... Uh, NPCs that actually exist in, in Dark Souls 3 as well. And has the same name. And, uh, uh, yeah. Um, which I believe is the blind character. I believe that is the one that has exactly the same name. But that's not really a really important connection. The really important part is is the fact of how the... Uh, uh, what was it? <laughs> I'm trying to remember because there was a certain very, very obvious connection. I forgot because I think you noticed it early on in the game and stuff that... 
it is that I, I forgot if it had if the connection was via the DLC or not. If the correction was with like the ringed city, ringed city, city in ruins. Oh, city in ruins, and then uh, like the gale. Oh, oh, give me that thing, your dark soul. You know, supposed to be like further on years in the future. That is where the capital is. That is what becomes the capital in in Elden Ring. And also certain classes kind of seem to have a connection to certain Dark Souls classes. The funny thing is also the magic, if you think about it. Okay, so if Dark Souls 3 is in part of the Bloodborne universe, Bloodborne universe obviously has their whole connection to stars and that astrology star magic. In Dark Souls 3 it's not mentioned as much if I remember correctly, but then it's very interesting that astrology can, is a class. But then of course there are also other similarities with certain things as well. Use certain NPC names and certain other things like in in Dark Souls 3 there of course the whole uh, you know the whole uh, they stuck the whole dark moon dark moon or the dark uh, blah 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 uh, one of those uh, Covenants kind of thing that you can join in Dark Souls 3 that could technically be linked to the same to the witch uh, that's in uh, the Sinella Ring. But if you think if if say the Ringed City is actually the main city that becomes the capital in Elden Ring, you will think that oh uh, with the Elden Ring with the Queen of course that is the one that kept the Elden Ring in check and that Queen. Could technically be the queen, like before you face off against Gale, there is a someone you find or on a thing that seems to be dead or whatever, and I believe you attacked it or whatever it was and stuff like that, and that one is maybe the one that becomes the queen or something like that, which is very very interesting. Like there are connections to Canada to the DLC and stuff like that, but I forgot exactly what the connection was. I had it in my head before and stuff like that that I was gonna do like a big thing out of it. But now that I waited so long in the video, I don't remember exactly what it was, but yeah. But there are definitely like a lot of similarities with Dark Souls 3 with certain specific thing, how certain covenants are like a mirror of certain things. And how if it's if it's the same universe as Bloodborne except oh now you're walking from the dream and that you you're the main character in Dark Souls 3. Is supposed to be the hunter or the assassin or whatever it is, and you're supposed to be part of the black hand assassin, but you're a member that was maybe exiled or something like that. And and you know the hunter ring being a reference, being one of the items that are a reference to like Bloodborne and stuff like that, and certain other things in Bloodborne, like certain NPCs being similar and stuff like that. And then if that is the case, of course, then you could see that oh, of course, you know the whole. Uh, let me check what they want. Buy a burrito. <laughs> Buy a burrito. Ah. Oh, there I am. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna of course make more, you know, more actual research and stuff like that before I actually do a video on it and stuff like that. But yeah, but I have of course explored in the in that area as well. In the, in the capital area and stuff like that, but yeah. You know, one thing is important that in every kind of tomb uh, in the game, you can find those those uh, things, uh, like the great grave worth, and there are certain two type of those plants. One is used for legendary ashes, and one is used for normal ashes, and then there are different ranks. 
So always if you find a tomb, remember to clear it out. Uh, there were certain tombs that I did discover earlier that was a bit too rough for my character, even when I had a shield and stuff like that. The main problem is seemingly is that when you have like lag on the t television, if you have like even if you have a faster weapon, is your certain enemies become a lot harder to deal with <laughs> when you have the input today. But of course I can kind of get used to it and stuff like that, and you know like you know which is why the first you know kills on certain bosses, there like the first attempt kills on certain bosses was really impressive. Although there is one of the tibia mariners that you face early on. <laughs> and it was actually super easy. You could just run around the torrent and then used to like kill it off. And of course, I used my fang beam bashes, but they were more like a distraction. But those skeletons that it summons are really easy to deal with. By the way, on skeletons, when you kill them, you can attack them, but you need to stand with the correct distance and then basically attack them when they're on the ground. And that basically perma kills them and stuff that, which is a good way to like deal with them and stuff that. But they are not really targetable when they're on the floor, but they are kind of targetable when they start trying to assemble themselves again, that's when they become targetable and stuff that. One thing that's also important is that dexterity actually affects your spell casting time, how quick you can cast spells and stuff that. It also affects how easily you get, uh, how easily you can stay on torrent and stuff like that because you're getting knocked off the, uh, by your horse. Now the reason why the horse doesn't get affected by status effects is of course because the horse uh, uh, is a spectral, it's an undead horse, pretty, pretty much is what it is. And it's technically not really a horse, like it's like weird, well, like why do they call it a horse? They don't technically call it a horse, you know, in game. Really, to be honest, you know, cause for the spectral steed, that's all you know, really. Because obviously it has horns, which, you know, I guess that will make it a Pegasus, but it doesn't fly, so it's a... Uh, uh, because Pegasus... Oh, wait, Pe Pegasi cannot always fly. <laughs> I forgot. What's the lore? <laughs> no, but a flying cat! Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> flying cat. You just install helicopter, lol. But yeah, uh, I have actually started playing Final Fantasy VI yesterday uh, as well, waiting to do the let's play with that. I want to, of course, finish up all of my let's plays that I've started. I did not start the Final Fantasy II let's play, I don't think, because I haven't finished through that game. It's stuff there, but there are multiple let's play I've started. And there was one game that I kind of played through without doing a let's play of it. Which is kind of Final Fantasy 3 and stuff that, like I did some videos on it, you know, and that one I probably won't make a let's play of. Not that Final Fantasy 3 is good, Final Fantasy 3 is like a really, really good body. It's just, you know, like, like there are several ones where I got to the end and then I don't finish them. And that's just mainly because of, like, certain, like, stress and other things. Now, the thing is, in Final Fantasy 1, the main problem is, of course, I would need to grind to get to Warmack again. The question is, do I record a grind or do I just grind off screen and then once I get into the fight, then record? But then I don't know if I will be able to kill Warmack or not, of course, in the White Mates, like only challenge. And the thing is, of course, that I know that I could probably finish that. And in Final Fantasy IV, of course, I need to find, uh, finish the final boss. The main thing is, I of course, I didn't do the preparations on the final boss because the fact is that all the final boss doesn't uh, stop attacking you until you use a certain item so you can basically set up all your defense beforehand and actually you should on that fight focus on surviving first and stuff that but yeah also when it comes to the bows in those while there is ammo for the bows like like arrows that you can equip those arrows you drop you don't like run out of ammo you know even though it has a number to them that is just because like multiple characters can equip the bow and stuff, and the bow actually, if, for example, if a body is wholly damaged and then enemies are weak to wholly, then of course it's like a really, really good and stuff like that, and the bows aren't as bad as people think. Of course, you could also like have shields and other stuff, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Final Fantasy VI, of course, I would probably wait with doing the let's play of because, like, there seems to be a certain chests that you can only get. At very specific points, like when you're in, in, in the camp and with KFKs, there seems to be one chest that I don't know how you're supposed to get, or if it was a certain path that I just missed and stuff like that. Now, the question is, of course, when I do a let's play, I could technically do make it a speed run, except you know, reading the text because I really want to make it like a, an actual recording where I actually record my 
voice over and stuff that and keep them of course that the headset because they're not hearing music you know the headset turns itself off but that of course does not turn off the microphone which is why the microphone still gets recorded even when the headphones aren't like active and stuff that but of course if I will be playing a game the headphones would have the volume I have trying to get to Morrowind to work like I have the discs. The thing is though that my original Morrowind discs I don't have anymore. But then when I got a certain PC way back in the day I did get like a core with the graphic card. And then I got like several games from that. And those games basically, those games that I got from it uh, I put in a certain thing. And then one of those discs were for Morrowind. And I've tried to get Morrowind to start running, but I cannot. And I've tried to run it in compatible modes. Different compatible modes that I've tried and stuff that, but I cannot make it work. I've tried Windows 98, Windows Me, and stuff that, which is supposedly what it is supposed to be, or the XP service packs and stuff that. And I've tried to be administrator, I've tried rock resolution. I've tried several times. Now supposedly there is a fixed version, but I don't want to have to like get like a Steam version of the game or whatever it is, you know. And I have updated the Morrowind game, so supposedly it is updated to the last latest version. So if anyone know exactly what compatible settings you need to use, and these are specific to Swedish ones, so do I reduce the color option? Do I set that to a certain amount of colors? Do I use the 64480? Is it some kind of in-game setting I need to do? Is there a text file? I can go in, go in and change because I could think that oh man, it might be used like going to like going to you know. Because you have a config here, like test TS01 Morrowind starting cell, show FPS, max FPS, Tyarka first zero, skip program flows, don't thread load, thread priority, thread sleep time. menu stats because basically if you change certain things in here you can actually change uh, question one on a clear day you chance blah 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 strange animal looks up and hunt a snare answer one blah 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 and do they show you what the what classes you get because there's a way to change moons weather Weather clear, weather cloudy, weather foggy. Yeah, it is so cool that you could technically go in here and change a bunch of things and stuff that like. <laughs> Fonts. Where it calls regular century gothic font, regular Daedric font. Is there an actual Daedric font in Windows? Font color. So you could technically, if you know what you're doing, you could technically change. Level up. I forgot because like those questions right make sense right for what class like you become but is there a way to uh, to check like what class is what does it say that anywhere editor starting cell mon motley in fort prison towers so you could basically s check where the starting thing is editor starting position Subtitle zero, show hit fader, blah blah blah. Screenshot base name, screenshot, screenshot enable.
Bam, bum. Bada, bum. Bada, bum. But yeah, um, should that do it for today? Probably. I need to try and figure out also what, uh, which of the webcam videos I have uploaded and which ones I have not uploaded and stuff that, you know. Need to try and figure that out, you know. Um, wait, it's not. Why is the video not showing up here? Doesn't it show up when you start the recording? Alright, video 7 over there. Over there! Ah, ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think that will do it for today actually. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. The thing is the sun skin is down now and it doesn't get that much darker. The annoying thing is of course is when you're... Like the sun skin doesn't fully block and I don't know if there's something extra I can do if I could just... Maybe I should get some kind of tape or get something else that I could like pull down instead of just this. But there is like this thing I have pulled down and then the other thing on the other side. And still if the sunlight is like directly on my window then like that annoys you when you're like gaming and stuff that like you can still get sun directly in the eye and then it's still powerful enough to be like really, really annoying and I don't know if I need to have something on this side of the window as well something like closer to the window that I could put up <sighs> or I could put up a piece of cardboard because there's a certain piece of cardboard that I have in the bathroom that's thick enough so I would need a piece of cardboard that's large enough to have in the whole window that's probably what I would need a big enough piece of cardboard. <laughs> big enough piece of cardboard. Anyway, this has been Sonosis. This has been the Sonosis show talking about some updates and stuff that. I will, you know, be posting more screenshots. And keep in mind that if I do a screenshots, I do it. Oh, this is the game time I have on this character. And this is how much I have explored so far and stuff that, you know. And stuff that, you know. And of course, the funny thing is that you cannot show the full map really on the screen at the same time. Because even when you have it fully zoomed out, there's just so many locations and stuff like that. Now, there are, of course, I'm a bit saddened by the amount of trophies in the game because it just feels like, sometimes it just feels like this whole thing bullshit how certain games are like, oh, this game can only have a thousand game score and stuff like that. Like, I feel like. Like, sometimes it feels like Sony is trying to be like, oh, if a game is multi-platform title, then they make it so that, so that oh, there cannot be too many PS trophies, because the PS trophies need to be similar to, like, what the game score would be, and stuff like that. But I feel like, honestly, sometimes, and I know that coding in trophies is maybe not easy to do, or whatever, or maybe it's time-consuming, but it just feels like sometimes you just wish that, oh, I wish just I could get rewarded for doing this. Like, of course I can understand they're not gonna have trophies for every single boss in the game. <laughs> because there would be have to be a crazy amount of trophies if that would have been the case. But why not finding certain amount of sites of grace? Bronze, uh, maybe uh, two, two or three bronze trophies, two silver trophies, and maybe three gold. Or whatever, you know, and then, you know, find X amount of bonfires and stuff like that. And then they maybe also have something like a fully explored, like discover all the areas, like discover all the locations in Limgrave, discover all the locations in Kaelid, or whatever it's called. Discover all the locations in Liurna, discover all the locations in... I forgot what the last area, or that area is called, the one where the capital is. Uh, and stuff that, and then there's supposedly also a snow area. Now the volcano mountain area is kind of part of that same area as well, where the capital is and, and stuff that, but yeah. <laughs> that area is annoying. I don't know how to reach the the manor technically, if you're supposed to go around from another way. Or maybe you're supposed to get captured. It kind of looks like you could get captured by those big spinning machinery things. Although I don't know if there is a certain thing you need to do in order to capture, maybe that's how you end up in the manor or whatever. I mean, that could make sense, you know, and stuff that, you know, that could make sense, you know. But then I'm guessing if you get captured that you would probably have to kill the boss. 
in a manner in order to escape. And that would probably would not be good to get captured early, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. That's what it looks like, at least, because you can often tell, like, if there is an enemy that is able to capture you, you in a Souls game, then you can usually tell, like, oh, this this enemy has a bag. Oh, I'm, I'm guessing, oh, what's it going to do with the bag? Oh, it's going to put you in the... Like in Bloodborne, it's so beneficial getting caught by that bag because then you can find that really, really heavy armor that has like pretty, pretty decent defense and stuff that, and that area is just so, so good with the stuff there. And if you're good enough at killing those dudes in that area, you can get like a lot of luck. Like, like it's a pretty good, good, you know, you know, pretty good farm for the things. Let's call it. It's souls in, in, in dark souls. What is it in Bloodborne? Yeah, blood echoes is what it's in. Blood, in blood, blood echoes. <laughs> By echo in blood, la. Oh, it's blood again. <laughs> but like, oh, it's blood again. <laughs> anyway, I see you all next time.